everybody. It's me, Adnan Qureshi, and alongside Graham Houston. What's up, everyone? How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Uh, I'm good. I've uh, actually been vacationing out in my island here. Uh, it's, the island is called Namek. Uh, it's, there's my tent right there. Um, as you've been holding the fort down at One For You Central, yeah, I see. I'm at, I'm at our brand new studio. Oh, and, man. Uh, also known as my dining room. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we worked very hard over the last three years that we haven't been on to get that studio procured, you know? Yeah. But I mean, it only, it only took quarantine and Zoom for us to be able to afford a virtual background. <laughs> We're making the big bucks now here on the One For You show. It's been, uh, it's been too long, Graham, since we've done this. It's been uh, a little over two, it's like two and a half years or whatever, getting close to three years that we've done this. Yeah, it's been a crazy past couple of years. Uh, I, I think, I mean, you're mentioning earlier how we hadn't done anything since before I got married. And mm -hmm. That was June of 2018. Yeah, the second to last episode that we did, I remember uh, I, I was taking a look at some of the old archives was when we actually mentioned that you had gotten engaged. I give you a big round of applause. So now I'll give you another round of applause for actually being married now. Yeah, I did all the heavy lifting of that <laughs> um and then uh so yeah now you've become a married man uh if anyone who's still subscribed to the channel thank you for still being subscribed uh have yeah, noticed what that you you've... what are you, if you're still subscribed what are you what are you well, <laughs> well last week they can check out the thing i filmed last week that i put up on the channel like uh, Kureishi in quarantine so instead of doing an episode two of that just yet, I guess now it's going to be episode 24 of the One For You show, it looks like, instead, which is great. I guess so. And it's been so long. My apologies for my, uh, you know, hygiene. Yeah. He got into a Street Fighter match, and unfortunately, Graham did not come out on the winning side. You know what? Actually, that's um, one of the things the – the virtual backgrounds reminding me of is I've been watching a lot of, uh, have you seen like the corridor crew, uh, corridor digital? They do like, um, I know corridor digital, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I don't know corridor crew though. They do, um, like visual effects artists react to like good or bad CGI and stuff. And they have, oh. they have a store where you can actually, their shop, you can buy a, um, like a green screen blanket. I think I'm actually going to get one of those. <laughs> that would actually be really cool. Yeah. And, then, and then I wouldn't be missing my two front teeth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so, well, Graham, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry that you've missed out on some of your teeth in the last, in recent years, but I am happy that you got married. Uh, as, as some people who have also been on the channel have noticed, you've been editing a couple of reels for me because now as of... Say. Yeah, yeah. You're, the big, you're the big dog. Well, I mean, right now there's a bit of a lull, but uh, <laughs> but the ring's not barking as much right now. You really like, you know, stepped it up a notch as far as following your dream. I shouldn't do that. Um, uh, following your your dream and passion of, you know, being in the wrestling scene and and being becoming a pretty awesome ring announcer. I appreciate that. Like, it, it, it kind of would be no secret, I guess, to people who've been on the channel because we've done a couple of wrestling-themed episodes and stuff like that. Our, our most watched episode is actually the Lucha Underground episode, uh, I noticed. I was just looking at the numbers. Oh. Um, and now I've worked with a lot of guys who worked at Lucha Underground. I, uh, you know, I, it, it, this journey started for me near the end of 2017, near the end of, like, not too far after we started or the last episode that we did is when I was starting to train. And then all of a sudden, like I've had a chance to work for impact wrestling, which you came out to one of those shows. I've done stuff like the Irvine improv. I've had the chance to be on new Japan pro wrestling, even in, in a small capacity, but an important capacity for like hyping out Chris Jericho versus Hiroshi Tanahashi at wrestle kingdom, which is one of the most mind blowing things I've ever done in my life for sure. For that. Oh yeah, absolutely, and uh, I, I, you love the footage too. When I sent you the footage, you're like, I don't. You, when you were starting to put stuff, you're like, yeah, I just let you get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah, that was 
definitely that was i was like are you serious like you're you had that much interaction with, with jericho and yeah that was awesome that was good my, my favorite bits to try to edit into anything except that the copyright <laughs> gets it <to> yeah <laughs> right we would put in a clip of that, but unfortunately, yeah, New Japan would probably unfortunately take it down. But I have a raw version of the real still that Graham gave me that has the New Japan stuff that I, I send to promoters if they ask for it. Um, so, but it, it's, been, it's been quite the journey. And then fortunately, it's been on pause because of the uh, entire world situation that we are in. Uh, but it left Graham and I with some free time for the first time together in so long even though we're doing it from my island and, and, and our studio uh, yeah, that we decided, you know, it's, let's do a one, let's do a one for you show episode. Cause we actually had somebody request a return for the one for you show. So Julio, this is for you, I, I guess. Um, so what have you been, what have you been doing to uh, keep yourself occupied during the, the stay at home orders? So, um, I mean, it's, it, it's been a lot of, mostly a lot of video gaming for me, which has uh, been appropriate considering we're the one for you show. And we used to talk a lot about gaming and I've been playing a lot of like, I've been catching up on the backlog. I think we talked about backlog one time in an episode and, uh, and how I've been able to go through a bunch of stuff and I'm also on the Game Pass subscription on Xbox One. So Game Pass gives you kind of a smorgasbord of like games that you can play um, for a subscription price. And I've been able to catch up and play or have the idea or to play games I haven't had a chance to before. Like this was before quarantine, but that's how I finally got a chance to play Doom 2016. And like Kingdom Hearts 3 is on Game Pass. At some point, I'm going to get to that. But I, I think the games, there's two games that sunk a lot of my time so far during quarantine. One has sucked everyone's time is, is Animal Crossing New Horizon, hence why I'm on an island. Um, there's the conspiracy theory that Nintendo may have started some of this quarantine just so Animal Crossing New Horizon would be one of the best selling games on the Switch, which I haven't, I don't know if you've heard, Graham, but the Switch ever since like the lockdown stuff went in place became a huge hot commodity and it's like the hardest console to find now. Yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah, and so like people are marking up switches like crazy, and Nintendo is actually going to be trying to uh, meet the demand and try to put out like a couple uh, more million switches that to get out to consumers because the demand has been so high for the system, and rightly so because yeah, Animal Crossing is a great kind of alternative to real life right now, kind of living an island and like you know making infrastructure and stuff like that, and like designing my house and all that. So it's been really nice, uh, really chill. Um, as well as I sunk a ton of time on the Xbox One into the Outer Worlds. Um, yeah. I, saw, yeah. I saw that you posted about that. Mm -hmm. The Outer Worlds is very similar to like Fallout, like Fallout 3 or Fallout 4, stuff like that. Reason being is that there's a lot of ex-Fallout devs who worked on the Outer Worlds. And it's also got really great companion mechanics that remind me of like the Mass Effect games and stuff like that. But it was a really cool RPG with a lot of great, like for me especially, like, even though there's a lot of shooting and stuff you can do and you can't avoid combat, there's a lot of situations I was able to get out of because I put a lot of stuff into my charisma and my talking skills. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of, like, instead of it coming to bloody, like, conflict, I was able to lie, intimidate, or persuade my way out of, like, situations that would, uh, like, instead of, like, blowing the walls off and stuff. And that was something I thought that was really cool on top of it, having a lot of really compelling characters and companions and stuff like that. And it was just a really good time, and I, I really hope that The Outer Worlds does very well uh, or has been doing well and such like that. But I'm, I'm really glad that it was a game that was on Game Pass that I would have known nothing about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I saw some people were playing it, and so I decided to try it. I'm like, oh, this is, and it just sucked me in, like yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all all I've really seen is like memes from the new Animal Crossing and like what all my friends have been doing with it. But um, I guess, and also, I mean, shout out to Victor Lucas. I saw him like put Batman everything and <laughs> the Justice League. Which, let's, let's, oh, it, 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 oh, I was going to say, I was definitely one of the, uh, the jealous, like, uh, oh, man, I wish I could, <laughs> I wish I could be joining this fun, but, yeah, I've, I've mainly just been, like, 
watching shows to pass time. I saw Tiger King like everybody else. Um, There's a lot of memes on Tiger King too. Those are memes everywhere as well. Yes. Um, and then, uh, oh, I started, I, based on your recommendation of, of My Hero Academia, I started watching it and then I actually passed the, because you only watched the first season and now I'm on the third. But Now, does that show get you as emotional as it's gotten me from time to time though? Uh, I mean, I don't know that I've gotten emotional, but it, I mean, it definitely strikes those chords, you know, mm-hmm. it's definitely like a, a pretty, it's more deep at times than you anticipate it to be, I guess. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's, I think it's got a lot of great mass appeal because of the characters it creates, the cliffhangers it, it puts and the cool action that's in there too. I think it does a really good job of weaving all of these things into a story that's compelling to watch from episode to episode, which is something any show wants to do, not just an anime, you know? Yeah, and happy belated birthday to Bakugo. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, he, I'm sure you would tell him that and he'd be all mad that you remembered his birthday. Like, shut up! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just start yelling at you and stuff. I told you uh, not to give me anything. <laughs> um, I was gonna say in regards to Victor Lucas, I always think it's still a trip too how we started the show, um, and then we had Victor Lucas on the show, freaking five years ago now, and then this year uh, I was actually on the Electric Playground for the first time, right. which was. Yeah, which was a trip. Like, so if you guys are interested, if you go to the EPN, the Electric Playground um, uh, YouTube channel, if you look up the the kind of salute to the 3DS, the, the farewell to the 3DS video, uh, you'll actually see me on that video, and that was a dream come true, absolutely. And I still can't. <laughs> we can do that, right? We can like that. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's that was a dream come true for me. Like, I, it's the last few years have been me like just trying to make my dreams come true. And I've made so many of them work out and it's been awesome. And I've really also appreciated having your support on a lot of that too, because you, you know, you've helped me out throughout so much of my life and it's just, you know, you're a very important person to me. So I appreciate all that. You know? It's my pleasure. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you do well, I, I do well to see you do well. <laughs> it's, it, it's, I like, I like doing whatever I, can to you know contribute to seeing you succeed at what you want to do so it's- i appreciate that uh there was a game i wanted to ask you about because you had played more of it than me because i just couldn't get as into it trying it out and then i got distracted by the outer worlds like I, i'll probably try to get back to it but uh i've recently acquired a copy of death stranding all oh, right uh, yeah, and we haven't talked about this yet, but I, did you beat Death Stranding? Like, you definitely sound like you put some time into it more than I did, for sure, because I only put, like, maybe, like, six or seven hours into it, I think. Uh, no, I, I didn't I – I have not beaten it, and even the amount of time that I put into it probably barely scratched the surface of, like, how, how much you – actually end up doing in the game i know our friend aaron has i'm pretty sure he has beaten it and if mm-hmm. he hasn't then yeah he's light years beyond where where i ever got to like i actually saw like i was watching i went over to his place this before quarantine um and i saw like i was like when did you get to do that he's like oh yeah that's kind of a spoiler i was like it's uh yeah it's it's definitely i could see if if it could maybe become a little monotonous but uh i think that's what got me is that like it's just walking and like i I, and i hear it's a slow burn it's like the slowest burn in that like i would really have to put even more time into it it's just that like i've got so many other things vying for my attention right now but i want to try to see if I can get into Death Stranding, you know, or if it's going to be, I wonder if it'll be like for me with the XCOM games where I, had, I restarted the XCOM games like three or four times before I finally clicked and I understood. Like, it's like, oh, I don't get it and stuff like that. But then finally, I'm like, I get it. I understand. Now I love it. You know? 
Yeah, and again, for me, it was also like a meme gold mine. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't know if you saw any of the stuff, but it was like uh, one of one of my friends is a DJ, and he he posted uh, or reposted one that was a. Uh, uh, because he he uses vinyl and he's like uh, vinyl DJs carrying all their stuff to their gig and it's like <laughs> <laughs> the big tower of packages on your back. Yeah, so good. Oh but, man, because yeah, um, I, I have the two games that I was working on before the whole shutdown thing was um, Death Stranding and uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Um, and I, I have yet, I don't know why I haven't, but I just haven't gotten back to playing games yet. I guess I just, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, it's not like I don't have the time. Um, but I'll probably be getting to that like later on this week. Well, I do, I do know why it, because, um, I mean, my wife and I have been trying to get our apartment, like just the way on it and now that we have had the time and we don't like because you get off work you don't you come home you don't really want to do anything it's uh, right. it's hard to find the motivation to like you know decorate or whatever so you're actually using your time efficiently as a that's been the hardest thing about the quarantine is that like i want to do more kind of like stuff like that like clean around or stuff like that but i've mostly been just kind of like chilling mostly I've, I've done a little cleaning it's not like i haven't done a lot, like any but there's more i should be doing you know yeah, definitely so we've been trying to focus on you know cleaning and decorating and getting i mean because if we're spending all of our time here we want it to you know look as nice as possible or at least in absolutely as much as possible so no, that makes that makes complete a ton of sense, and it's also lucky that you're married now with you know, you know, with your wife spending this time during quarantine and stuff like that. I'm sure that helps immensely, also, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but that's 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 been really cool. Um, but it was also the trippy thing about like Death Stranding that everyone talks about is that like apparently how on the nose that like literally like death stranding came out the tail end of 2019 and now 2020 we're living in death stranding essentially yes i know that was the the great one of the greatest things was like uh yeah courier services every uh what is it like everybody stays inside courier services bring everything to you and they're all like laughing at uh kojima and then he's He's like, uh, what was that? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so, so perfect. It's a weird thing. Um, the other thing I just started recently playing and getting into because I was a, I played like all of the Dead Rising games before. So Dead Rising 4 is on Game Pass. So I started playing some Dead Rising 4 and I'm getting used to it. But I also saw that it had a piece of DLC that was on sale that I was very interested in, which was the Dead Rising 4 mini golf. And Zombie golfing is the greatest thing I've done. It's one of the most fun things I've done for Sugar in this quarantine. It's just golf with zombies around. Do you get to use like a zombie limb as a... As no, a- no, you use regular... Well, you don't use regular clubs. Like like my fucking like driver is like a battle axe or something like that. So it gets more power. But like zombies are on the course and you hit them and they go to shreds or they blow up and stuff. It's You basically play golf. But there's just zombies everywhere and stuff like that. But you look ridiculous and you can get power-ups and stuff like that. It's awesome. The best part of it, too, is that it has a bunch of, like, remixed old Capcom music, too. So it's got, like, Guile's music and Ryu's music or the Mega Man music and stuff going on. It's so cool. I really like it. It's been really fun. I've played more of the mini golf so far than the regular Dead Rising 4 campaign so far. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I... uh, I was going to say, like, I have, not only is it that I just have those two games, I have, like, a whole backlog that I should be working on right now because there's, I literally, like, practically no responsibility. Like, (laughs) there's no, there's no bedtime, there's no work, there's no, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no structure. I can just basically make my own schedule and fill it all with video games 
Well, I'm glad because this this to just doing this episode of the One for You show from Zoom from home was your idea, which was great because it gives me some structure because I realized like when you when you go and you don't have work for so long, you're like, oh yeah, I needed work that time off. Or that meme you made of me, it's like when you have all the days off you requested, but it's the end of the world. <laughs> um, yeah, and so like this gives me a little bit more structure, it gives me some creative like outlet to do some things. I might get back into streaming, you know, uh, it, uh, like depending on what's going on with this. I know there's going to be a small thing. I'm going to shoot for something else that I'm involved when, with that's going to be a small little thing that's going to be part of a bigger thing that'll be cool. And I'm just really glad to have that. Sounds cool, but the way that you described that was like the most vague. Like, it's a little thing, but it's- I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but it's just, you know, it's involved with like one of the things that I do. No, I get, I totally get it, but it's just funny. Like, it's a small thing, but it's part of a bigger thing. <laughs> it's, I mean, in theory, right? That was me doing the Chris Jericho thing. It was a small thing, part of a bigger thing. Yeah, which was awesome. Uh, I, re the thing that like, because uh, I remember you telling me that uh, you were going to go do, like, I remember you telling me you were heading to go do that gig or whatever and i was vague about it because i didn't know because i didn't know what i could talk about well and i don't think you also knew everything that was no happen. Yeah. so no i didn't know that chris jericho was involved or what was going on until i actually got there yeah. um i've told that i've told this on i think i told this on super beatles patreon um but i'll tell it here on my channel but it was like all i was told when i did this thing for new japan was um basically that we were going to shoot something and i needed to have be there on this day at this time and i was like damn it i work and i had asked a co-worker to switch with me they were able to switch with me because it was like the tuesday before halloween i can tell you the date i remember that much <laughs> um and i didn't know what i was doing my thought was it was going to be like we were going to shoot a commercial for actually these shows the showdown los angeles san jose shows is the last like ticket push thing i thought we were going to do that and i thought we were going to shoot that at the, uh, the new japan dojo or something because uh or whatnot but and then i get the address from my contact and then i ride up with another wrestler um uh, who's in it um it was me and hyde uh, who Kai the Supreme hates Hyde. Let me tell you, that, uh, Kai the Supreme. Uh, but like Adnan and Hyde, totally good friends. But we, uh, we ride up and we were talking, funny enough, about Chris Jericho at one point. And we get to this place. And if you look at that video, because uh, both of those videos with Jericho, people ask us like, where were you guys? That, looked, that was a weird looking place. I'm like, trust me, we thought we weren't in the right spot. Because there was like barbed wire fencing and stuff like that. And we were also the first ones there. So we were like, are they shooting something here? Uh, and then we actually get in and, you know, and then the, the guys who like were the camera crew and stuff, they show up first. And so we helped them set up and then he's saying like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Chris will be here and whatnot. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Um, uh, and then later it's like, and then he's all like, do you guys know what you're doing? We're like, no, it's like, oh, you see, well, Chris Jericho, is going to be calling out Tanahashi for the Tokyo Dome. And we're, and like, what? Yeah. So, like, when he says Chris is going to be here, you met Chris Jericho. And then, like, at one point, like, Hyde and I and the other wrestlers who were there, a part of that, it was, like, us, like, 8-Bit Lit and Louis 54, Aoka Muhara, we were all, uh, and D DKC, Dylan Kyle Cox of the Bomb Squad, we were all the fake Tanahashis and also the fake Chris Jerichos. Um, and we're at one point, like, having lunch with Jericho or something like that. And I just remember going up to Hyde, going like, isn't it weird how, like, we were just talking about Chris Jericho in the car, not knowing that we were going to be having lunch with Chris Jericho today. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, and then, you know, it, he, Jericho was super nice, uh, great to work with. Like, he was very kind to give uh, me and Hyde some advice when we asked for some advice. And he didn't have to, by any means. He had to get on a plane to do AEW the next day in a, a totally different state, you know. He was getting on a red eye, essentially, from after we were done shooting to then go wrestle and be the – because he was the world champion at the time for AEW. And like, but he just shows up and he does this record thing and it was, it was just awesome. He was a great experience. He's a wealth of knowledge, obviously, because he's been in the business for 30 years and stuff. And 
it's just another like fantastic thing and one another unforgettable experience in my life like you know that and, like doing impact and like doing all the stuff that i've done so far even even just doing the santino brothers shows that i've done has been just the trippiest thing you know that's awesome man yeah well, I think, um i think we're gonna have to wrap up was there anything else that you wanted to add uh i guess I'll, I, let me just plug I guess the stuff that I've done because wrestling needs people to watch their content right now, you know, cause wrestling's in a weird spot. So like you can check out stuff that I've done on the Santino brothers, YouTube page. You can check out the wrestling pro wrestling YouTube page. Uh, obviously you can subscribe to new Japan world. Um, you can uh, check out ground zero on independent wrestling TV. I know if you sign up using the code ground, zero i think you get like a free five-day trial uh so i actually just got the opportunity to do commentary for them for the first time i've done a couple ring announcing shows for them uh uh including the one with orange cassie last year which was dope uh but i got to do commentary for their last show uh regulars mount up which is the last show they did right before this whole pandemic really locked us down uh and uh you can watch that show on independent wrestling.tv enoki dojo you know Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, which is on every 1 a.m. on KDOC uh, on Saturday nights. Um, we have not been able to tape any new episodes, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, but I know we've had plans in place because we have a wealth of backlog because that show's been on for 10 years. So we also have a Memphis version of our show. I was supposed to be in Memphis this weekend to do the show there, but the pandemic uh, canceled that. But um, ton of backlog for Championship Wrestling from Hollywood that's going to come up on the show, as well as you can watch us on Fight TV uh absolutely free the entire backlog of championship wrestling for hollywood is available for free to watch on fight tv uh, as well as the championship wrestling youtube channel which is the memphis version of our show the bumpers are different but the show is the same so it's got like a year's worth on there um so that's been me uh graham where are you on the social medias uh my instagram is underscore insta underscore graham underscore I, I don't really post all that much unless it's on my story and it's usually just memes that I <laughs> like my coworkers or something. The, the, the world needs memes right now. The world needs the levity and you're providing the world a service by doing that. I, I do my best. Mm -hmm. And then what was your Twitter again? I, and I know you don't post there very much, but you have some Twitter. Good question. I think it's just at Graham Husted. I think it is. I think it's just straight up your name. It's, isn't it the picture of you with, um, with Batman? No, that was before. That was before, but now it's uh, my face photoshopped onto uh, Sam from uh, Death Stranding. <laughs> oh right! It's yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that that it's a great picture. Everyone should look at that on Graham's Twitter. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Dashing Adnan. Uh, I have an Instagram now that I did not have before when I, we did this show. I started the Instagram when I got into wrestling. And if you were looking to book me, you can book at Handsome Voice, uh, uh, book, book Handsome Voice at gmail.com. There we go, there we go. Um, so uh, granted, you know, there's not a ton that can be done right now, but if you wanna talk, you know, and book me for a show or something like that, I'm a commentator, referee, announcer, character, Kaida Supreme, hashtag dominations. I have a faction of Asian wrestlers who are be well i'm sure when this is done we'd be looking to wrestle for your show so there you go sounds good well i guess even from home or net what was it namek where are you at yeah namek planet namek yep planet namek or from the dining room that's now the studio yeah uh this has been one, one for you Great fingers out.